Yo, what's good, everybody? And before we get started with this week's episode, guys, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We are almost at 300,000 subscribers, and we would love for you guys to help us make it happen. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for supporting the show, and let's get started with this week's episode. Men aren't men, bro. Yeah. Men aren't men. Mm. Just our, our generation. Yo, and, and again, I don't want to insult anybody, but that is like the recurring theme. And... and and look, women carry their own burden. They have their own things to deal with, which I'm not going to talk about. I'm not no woman expert. I can yeah. tell you what I think they should fix, but yeah. but I can tell you from the male side, they're not bringing anything to the table, mm. right? Men are complainers nowadays. Mm. Kind of like that pointing fingers that I was telling. You. It's complaining around all. Oh, it's because I'm brown. It's because I'm black. It's because I'm poor. It's it's because of the women. It's because of them. It's all of this finger pointing instead of looking at yourself. Yo, what's good, everybody? And this week's podcast is brought to you by our amazing sponsors at Geology. Guys, Geology is an award-winning skincare brand that has custom skincare regimen for the unique skincare needs of the everyday man. Guys, so many people send me messages and they're like, yo, Fees, I ain't trying to come off weird, but dude, what do you do for your skin? And guys, I always recommend hop on a skincare routine ASAP and Geology is an amazing one. You can take a self-diagnostic test and it will give you guys custom skincare products just for you and your particular needs. So go to geology.com, use the offer code roommates at checkout. You'll be able to get 30% off your monthly regimen. Guys, invest in improving your skincare, invest in leveling up physically, and the best way to do that is via geology. The link is in the description below. Hop on it ASAP and let's get to this week's episode. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. Guys, we got the jackets on. Man, I'm feeling good. So you know that we are in the northeastern yes. part of the United States of America. And I am telling you, <laughs> the conversation before the podcast, Chris. Gold. Is gold. I wish uh, Eddie recorded some of it. We may drop some of it on Patreon. The stuff we can show, obviously. Just only things we can show. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we're here. And, you know, we're looking, we're looking a little, you know, see you fashionable. I see you. I ain't mad at you, brother. You know, we're, yeah. we're also men. Mm. And sometimes we like to teach people. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, and, and so, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we got to bring back, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is one of my all-time favorite mm. human beings. This guy is so inspirational. This guy is so motivational. This guy is an innovator. He is an entrepreneur. But Bro. before we even bring him on the show, <laughs> you know, I got to... I haven't I haven't finished the fit, man. You know, there's this company called Jade Black. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know about hey. this company called yes. Jade Black. You yes, know, they make they make these glasses, hey. man. Yes. You know, I got, I got a little gift. Who you know, are you, call, right? You know, to, to go ahead and finish the fit, man. To go ahead and finish the fit, please. Yo. Oh my God! Welcome right. back to the podcast, <laughs> yo, the my one man. and only Jose Zuniga. Yo, man, I just said, yo, the last intro was killer. This man, yeah, I have never. My wife has never flattered me like that. Okay. I ain't never. This man just, bro. Jose, I'm telling you, if you yo. get an invite of being a part of Hafiz's groom's party, just don't be surprised. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm down. I'm down, bro. This, this, bro like, come on, bro. the love. Oh uh, yes, yo, yes, the yes, love yes, of this yes, man. Yes, By yes. the way. I didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that caught me off guard, my man, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You, guys are, you guys are a duel. I need a duel. Yeah. So I do have a duel, my brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out Juan. Yeah. 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 Yo, the, the hook and serve in that opening. I'm going <laughs> to teach him, man. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. He's a professional. He stole the show. Let's listen, do this. Listen, <laughs> listen, man. Listen, like, like I said, man, I've had the privilege of meeting so many dope, amazing people, man. And, it's, and last episode inspired me i remember when i sent it to chris man earlier i was like bro. <laughs> it was so inspiring man like we had people even quit their jobs after they watched really? the episodes change their Damn. life right, after that, that. that's that's well that's, you quit your job no oh <laughs> <laughs> I did though. <laughs> Soon after, was it because of the episode or after? It was. It was. It was confirmation that I need to do it. 
It was mad it, humbled. Exactly. Mad Confirmation. Hum- I'm, I'm yes. humbled, honestly. Yes. And I told you this after the podcast too. Like, you just he like Hafiz is good at like just bringing yeah. conversation. You brought mm-hmm. stuff out of me. Yeah. When you when we started that podcast, I really thought I was gonna be talking about style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How the heck we got into like <laughs> yeah. marriage and business? I mean, I'm just business oriented. Yeah, so it yeah. just naturally comes out. But yeah. like, he, like he just brought things yeah. out of me that like. You're a beast, bro. Nah, good right. at what you yeah, do. Yeah, we, for sure, we for try. Sure. Good at what you do. You sure. know. So I tell people all the time, man. Part of being a man and improving, leveling up. The theme of your channel, the theme of our channel, yep. is you gotta find people that motivate you, that inspire yes. you to greatness. And you're one of those guys, man, who's always motivating me, who's always inspiring Appreciate me, who's that. always challenging me. So, man, you, you're, you're. I don't know if you, we can say, but you're in New York. Correct. No, and you know, you're in New York. You got a studio here. Like, so what was the pro- thought process? Like, you're doing so many things. You have all these businesses. Like, yo, what's what's going on, man? Bro, like, um, this was this was the, the, the ballsiest decision we've ever done. Nobody understands it. Mm. And honestly, just so you know, we made decision, the decision. So we started the decision, like the whole process, pre-COVID. Yeah. Okay. Right? Pre-COVID, New York was booming. So this, we started this whole process, this project, November of 2019, mm. right? So COVID really ramped up around March 2020. Yes. We hadn't signed anything. We hadn't paid anything. We didn't pay anything till June 2020. So we were already deep in COVID. I remember talking to my brother. That's like He's my duel, right? Here's the thing with us. I'm the... I'm the risk taker. I'm, I'm gonna say it. like I'm the I'm the uh, like I, sometimes my risks are too much. Yeah, he's the more stable, right? Like he's like he's 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 older, so yeah. he like he's 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 more controlled, yeah. right? So it, it, it's a good balance, or like it, it's it's a good way to it's like a soundboard. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were talking. I'm like, you know, is this, is this gonna be a good idea? And deep down, it just something kept telling me like this is a good idea, mm-hmm. right? This right now people are fear mongering. This is the bandwagon effect. And obviously, uh, there's a quote that says that you should buy when there's blood on the street. And this is this is a quote referring to the stock market. I don't know if you ever, have you ever heard of that quote? I've heard of the quote. Uh, but so basically, origins. it says uh, to sell when people or, or buy when there's blood on the streets or mm-hmm. something like that. So mm-hmm. basically, when people are like panicking, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when you should be buying. Mm. When people are rejoicing and on, on the top, that's when you sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Mm. Right? We're going we're gonna to do this. The whole, this whole floor, you guys saw, we're, we're sitting at about 30,000 square feet. There was nothing here. So we invested all the money for it. And the biggest thing for this was mindset, believe mm. it or not. Mindset. Um, here's the thing. I was getting comfortable. I was getting really comfortable. In our area in Florida, we were the largest shipper in that area. We mm. moved the most product. We had the head guys of product Fence. clothes, guys. That kind of product, not the yeah, other yeah, kind yeah. of product. Oh, <laughs> bro, funny they say this. So funny they say this because we were in a small town, right? So at the time, I had a lot of sports cars and stuff, and I was young. Yeah. Connect the dots. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are like, so our neighbors, especially in, in, in our in our business complex, were always like, hmm, hmm, yeah. hmm yeah, they moving away. Yeah, yeah, they moving yeah. something. <laughs> we see boxes and yeah. supercars. Something's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, in yeah, here, right? Yeah. It's t-shirts, I yeah. swear. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. move a lot of projects, five different companies. But um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so I was getting comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember the time that I was the hungriest was when my back was against the wall. And that was when I first started, that I was that broke kid. I was working from home. I was finally starting to make some a little bit of money. And at the time, my mentality was, I need an office space. And I remember there was an office space, 700 bucks a month, and I was scared out of my mind, right? Nobody in my family has ever started a business. Mm-hmm. That The idea of being your own boss, like it just doesn't cross, has ever crossed anybody's, right? So I remember, you know, even my parents were not comfortable with me doing this. like. You're 19. Why would you? Why would you do this? You just started making money. Why not make money from your bedroom? Mm-hmm. And I very well could have made my money from my bedroom, but then again, I might have. I might have not, because my mindset was not there. Like I was not. I, I was not driven enough, nor was I under enough pressure. Because in my mind, it's like if I fail, okay, cool. I'm. I'm still here. I'll just live under my parents. Mm-hmm. So I pulled. I remember pulling that trigger, and I. I got that office. That was the best decision of my life. Mm. We expanded tremendously. We blew to the million by next year. Like mm. we were just flying at that mm. time. And what we started doing is that we just started renting all the spaces around that office till we had about 15 to 17,000 square feet of office space, wow. right? 
But what, what ended up happening is like I got into the state of comfort and comfort kills. Mm. Comfort is a killer, especially in this industry, because there's somebody always working harder. Mm. And the one thing that defeats comfort, it's that fire, right? It's mm. that risk that you could lose it all. Yeah. You can no longer be comfortable. Now you are uncomfortable. So we, I was at that literally last year around what was it november of last year 2020 i was in that state mm. tired and comfortable i'm like look i'm not spending a lot of money here because this is this is a safe bet mm -hmm. i'm in my hometown uh, i'm making good money i didn't have a need to innovate i didn't have a need to continue to grow or expand and that's why we moved mm. we well, base we base this move right here was like when i first got my shed i wanted a bigger area where I can get more employees, more talented employees, and I had bigger shoes to fill. So remember how I said I was the biggest shipper in the area in Florida? Mm -hmm. Again, the head guy from FedEx, <laughs> That's crazy. from the South Florida region, would drive up two hours to come to our office. Mm -hmm. That's how much weight we were moving. Damn, now I'm, <laughs> now I'm saying like, you said it, damn, you, you asked me up, bro. Hey, bleep that out. <laughs> um, that's how much product we're moving. Yeah. So we come here, right? And by the way, this month has been the most, again, Luke, and I, I don't say this to brag in any yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just saying like 100. what's going on really, right? Yeah. I'm trying to be transparent. It's been the most lucrative month we've ever had, yeah. right? We have millions of inventory back there. Almost 90% of it is gone at this point, mm. right? Um, ask me if any manager or head of FedEx <laughs> has come here. Has they come, Jose? Ha they have not come. Mm -mm. They have not come. Mm. We are no longer the biggest fish and we're a tadpole. That's mm. literally, so I remember the FedEx guys come, about five of them came to, and these are just basic guys just to scan the packages in and take them out. So I went, I, I usually like to talk to them, build a relationship with them, right? Cause they're, they're our shipper. So I was like, uh, are you guys surprised yeah. by how much product? And they scoffed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Legit <laughs> like that. No, I, I felt it like he humbled me yeah, mad yeah, quick. Yeah, I was yeah. like, all right. <laughs> I mean, He's like, oh, we've done more. Uh, and then they're like, you know, on Fifth Street, yeah, that company moves X amount every day. Right. Yeah. And I was like, all right, okay. Yeah. And then I was like, what does it take to get your head honcho to my office? And he's like, she doesn't move for anybody. <laughs> but he said, if you can get to this amount yeah. every day, yeah. I can guarantee you, you'll have a knock on your door for her. Yeah. Guess what my number is? <laughs> I'm going to move that amount, yeah. amount of product. That's yeah. my goal now. Yeah. Right? I got bigger shoes to fill now. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Mm. Right. And I love the fact that if I slip up, I don't love the fact, yeah. but there's just so much more responsibility. There's so much more fire. We have so many more families, yeah. including my own, that mm. I cannot screw up. Mm. That's so hard for people to understand. Yeah. They still don't get it. Yeah. I, I can explain it a hundred times and people are like, why would you do that? Mm. One of my favorite, um, digital mentors, a guy named Pastor Mark Driscoll. He's in, in Arizona. Okay. And he said, men are like a dump truck. They drive straighter with a heavier load. Yep. And so it's this idea I like that, that, yeah, I like is, this, that. Is, the, is this idea yeah. that when it's it comes to men, you need the, the, the burden of responsibility makes men rise to the occasion to greatness. And Damn. what I'm literally hearing from you is Damn. that's what you're putting on your back. Yes. And unfortunately, so many people, they spend their whole lives trying to avoid that responsibility. And that's the thing that like, like I've always been able to stomach risk mm. very well. Right. And I I'm, I'm OK with that. See, because I'm and, and a lot of people come to my office and ask me, like, because we have we have um, interns that, that we're mentoring and they ask me the same question every single time. Like, why would you do it? Right. Was it a smart idea? Is it paying off? And I tell them the same thing. Ask me in 10 years. I'll tell you in 10 years if it worked or not, mm -hmm. right? If it didn't work, cool. The market's going to let me know I made a stupid decision and I got to start all over again. And I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with starting with nothing again. I know the risk involved. I know how much I can lose, right? But right now it's too short term to tell. In 10 years, I can tell you if this was a good move or not. The same way that I knew renting that little office that was 700 bucks a month, that was way too much money for me at the time, was a great idea. The best idea I've ever had. I'm going to let you know in 10 years if this was a good idea, mm. you, know? you know? It's the long game, man. It's the long game, especially in society. We're so used and we want that instant gratification. Correct. And we feel like, you know, we explain on both of our channels that it's all about longevity. Long it's game. all about outworking the competition over and over and over again. I tell this to everybody and, it, and, it, and it's not a form of cockiness. It, it really is because people want secret sauces. People want 
like that little hack, right? Mm -hmm. And I tell this to everybody, it doesn't matter what industry is, and it is. If I was in that industry with you at the same time, I would beat you. Mm -hmm. I would outwork you every single time because I show up every day. I show up when I'm stressed out. I show up when I'm tired. I show up when I'm burnt out. I show up when I'm taking L's and I take a lot of L's. I show up every day, four in the morning I'm waking up, I'm in the office by six, mm. sometimes 5.30, if I can mm. make my breakfast quicker yeah, yeah. or my wife, well, my <laughs> she makes my breakfast quicker. Yeah, I'm here earlier, right? Mm. Every day, I don't care what it is, I'll show up. Yeah. And it's that longevity. I've been doing it for a while too. And I, again, this is not my end goal. I am like, people don't understand this. Like I'm, we're just, we're still like this. Like we're nothing. Mm -hmm. We are nothing at this point. Yeah. We are nowhere where we want to be. Yeah. The only person that gets it, my wife and my brother. Mm. Those are the only two people that really know where we're ending or mm. at least where we want to go. Mm. That's it. Man. So, you know, there's a lot of, conversation going on on especially mm -hmm. on youtube about this high value man conversations a mm -hmm. lot of talk about it mm -hmm. and one of the things that i tell people all the time it's very easy for you to claim yourself as a certain kind of man on the internet is okay. to be in the comments say oh yeah i'm this i do this and i do that and yeah. i'm this kind of guy it's so easy yeah. but then when you actually go out into the world and you actually meet people who are killing it you know that there's a difference Correct. between men who are putting in the work and absolutely. men who are not absolutely and that's something that i want people to understand jose literally is outworking 99.9% .9 of people and he still thinks he's not working hard enough. Jose oh is out earning 99.9% .9 of people but he still thinks he's not making enough money. Jose is innovating more than 99% of people but he still yeah. thinks that he's not out innovating. So there is a level of just radical work that I see that truly embody what I describe as high value men. But as we were constantly talking about in the office, so many people, one, don't know the amount of work people do. And so many people overestimate the work that they're putting in. So let, yeah. if you could, what would be like a typical day for you in regards to running all your businesses? Oh my God. Um, and after that, let's talk about high value men. Okay. I, have, I have something interesting on in that, but let's go ahead. Um, man, average day. So to what, first of all, I don't weekends to me are like a, like a Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, th that's the first, like I don't work. Today's a Friday. I didn't even remember it was a Friday. Like today, today's to Friday. Me, today's Thursday. Brother. Oh, today's, there you go. So you, know, you know, you work. <laughs> we well, don't know what day I, it is. Thursday, <laughs> to me, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it, every day is the same. I'm yes. coming in every day. Like I don't work for the weekend. Yes. Right. That's, 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 that's a horrible mindset to have. And if you have it, chances are you just don't love what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. So to me, every day is the same. Wake up four in the morning. Right. That, that rings off. I'll go to the gym or I, I'll either go for a jog or whatever, have my breakfast, shower, change. I'm in the office working by 536, right? From six till usually about eight, I'm going at it. Well, this is especially now that I've moved to New York, I've worked more than ever before, mm. more than ever before. And I tell this to everybody, it never gets easier. Mm. It only gets harder. And I don't expect it to get easier. I'm expecting it to get harder. I was telling you this, Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm young. You're, we're all young. I got gray hairs. Mm -hmm. I got, like, it is that stressful. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm, I'm on all, all the time. Give me a second, guys. My bad. Bro. No problem. It's all good. <laughs> um, so it never gets, it never, it, it'll never get easier. The more you make, the more responsibilities, the more stress, the more uh, people that you have depending on you, mm -hmm. right? So just content creation. I always say this. My hardest job, which people don't get, is content creation. I respect content creators so much. And if you've ever created content, you would respect the process of creating content. Mm -hmm. It is the hard, <laughs> because he gets it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is the hardest job you will ever do. Yeah. You will burn out from this thing, mm -hmm. but you still gotta show up, especially if you wanna compete in this type of environment where you got billions or millions of creators, right? Mm -hmm. But every week I, I pump out about 14 videos every week right so english and spanish so seven english seven spanish we have five different companies every single company we create high produced ads and if i were to show you how these ads run i mean each each ad could take about a day to shoot so that's why we have a team of about five editors but i usually end up being the one kind of like scripting it out or at least the concept and then the team deploys and 
puts it together, right? So every week we do that for every, or for every single company, that's times five. What is that now? We're at 23 pieces of content, mm. give or take. This does not count photography. I'm just counting video, mm. right? Because photography is included for um, paid media, mm -hmm. right? Ads and stuff like that. Um, all that needs to be produced every single week. That's what I usually start with just to script out. Mm. That, that has to be planned out. And you guys know that already, right? But then that needs to be recorded. Okay, so let's take that off the plate for a little bit. That in itself is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now we have to plan the marketing plan for all five companies. See, every single company runs independently. And this is what I learned. Uh, basically, our baby company, which is Essentials, or I call it the baby because that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the money maker. Mm -hmm. uh, everything we, we try, we try with that company, right? Mm -hmm. This We just had a launch with this company. It was the, or the largest launch we ever had. I was telling you, we had about 600,000 people hit the site. Mm -hmm. We completely sold out the site. And this is the most inventory we've ever bought, right? Mm -hmm. So I usually do all my marketing plans with that company. That was, I call it my baby company because that was the company that I would uh, kind of test. So marketing is a lot of A-B testing, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you run two things and you change one variable and see which variable works and then dump into that variable. That's mm -hmm. basically kind of what marketing is in a simplified form. Um, and we do this on every single platform. So mm -hmm. we're marketing on Hulu, we're marketing on Snapchat, we're marketing on Instagram, we're marketing on TikTok, we're marketing on YouTube. Any platform you can market on, we're on. And each platform has its own method to its madness. Mm -hmm. So we have to develop marketing plans for each one. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up finding out is that business is almost like copy paste, where once we figured out the formula for essentials, we have to then copy paste it and all the other companies. And that's how we're able to run five different ones mm. independently. It and if you sense. look at all five, they all got their own aesthetic. They all got their own market, mm. right? I didn't want them to overlap at yeah. all. Okay? Wow. So then that in and of itself, forget about it. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other process just to develop the marketing plan and how we we're gonna move product. Then I'm also head of design. So I design everything that you see. Wow. All the essentials, all the, he, every product that you see, me and then my brother also helps designing as well. Mm -hmm. But I design, you know, I go through all of it. Collections, design, season, blah, 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 fabrics. I do all of that. Mm. I also design all the campaign. Like, I'm going to keep going. All <laughs> I'm going to bore it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the thing that, and people tell me all this time, oh, I would love for you to record a day of your life. You'd get bored. Yeah. Mm. You would get bored. Because people think that being an entrepreneur is flashy. Yeah. Mm. The jets, the yeah. driving around, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. I'm behind my computer yeah. grinding. Yes. And just putting in work. And you're just going to see me this. Da -da. Okay. That's what you're going to see me do all day long for eight to 10 hours. Mm. And here's the thing. So because I have a family, I prioritize my family. I know my default is I am a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I love what I do and I can do this all day long. I just don't get tired. I'll just pop an energy drink mm -hmm. and back at it again. Yeah. Right. So I purposely try to make time for my family. Right. So I usually, if it's not a busy time, I'll try to leave by 530, but Let's be real. I'm working at home too. And you get that, right? You pop open your computer and you're going at it mm -hmm. while you're spending time with your family as well. Yeah. Uh, but it just doesn't stop. Mm. Uh, as what you were saying to the high value man thing. See, the thing with the high value man, it, what people fail to realize, it's that just like the name says, you, you are a high value man because you provide high value, mm. right? People think that you're a high value man because you're good looking, because you make a lot of money. Mm-mm. You're a high value man because you provide high value. For mm. example, doctors, they're high value. Why? You're saving lives. Yeah. That's a high value man. Mm -hmm. Lawyers, they're high value. Why? They uphold the law. Mm -hmm. That's a high value person. They, 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 they're, they're crucial to the fabric of society, mm -hmm. right? Entrepreneurs, business owners, they're high value men. Why? You provide jobs, right? Mm -hmm. You provide revenue. You provide solutions, yeah. right? That's high value. You're yeah. providing value. A high value man is not about me. It's about what I can do for society. Mm -hmm. And because of that, people respect you. Now you have status. Yeah. Because of that, that, and we all understand this in business, if you're, you guys are businessmen as well, so you understand, when you provide value to your customer, what happens? You get rewarded for it mm -hmm. monetarily. Yeah. Then the money comes. Of course. Right? Same thing with the doctor. Because he saves lives, here comes the money. Mm. Not everybody can do that. Yeah. Because the lawyer upholds the law, here comes the money, right? Mm -hmm. You are high value because you provide a lot of value. Mm. You're not high value because you're good looking. Yeah. Mm. You're not high value just because you won the lottery. Yeah. 
right? You're high value because you provide a lot of value. People respect you for it. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I think sense. people people fail to, to, to miss that. They yeah. think that, oh, you just have to be good looking, dress a little bit good, have a little bit of money, you're high value. No. Mm-hmm. No. And, and the reason why I asked you to share about your day mm-hmm. is, is that first, like I love how you said it's going to appear boring. Yeah. And the reality of the matter is there's routine and there's so much things that are not flashy. There's so many things that are going to be, you know, this maintenance, you know, this administrative work. There's so many yeah. things that you're going to have to do. But not just that. It's they used to do that every single day. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you yeah. said, if you told most guys to watch it, they couldn't watch it. Oh, no. no Versus way. now you have to now you have to do it. Yeah. Yep. It's easier to sit down and watch someone, yep. you know, run a business, yep. but then you have to do it. So there is such a level of there's levels to this game because oh, I think there's so many guys who want to sit back and complain and whine about what they're not getting out of life and not realizing that there's people who are at the top of the mountain who are putting in crazy amount of work. And that's why they're getting the results that they're getting right now. It is, it is 100 percent consistency. Yeah, it is consistency. How long can you stay standing on the top of the hill? Mm. Right. It's easy to work when you're winning. Cause I felt that before when you're, when, especially when you're initially just like blowing up, Oh, of course you're motivated. You're seeing the numbers yeah, roll yeah, in. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's easy. Right. But I want you to keep going five years from now. Mm-hmm. I want you to keep going when you're losing every day, mm-hmm. you're seeing the numbers maybe dwindle or flatline. I want you to keep going when you're burnt out mm-hmm. and you're out of ideas. That's when I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. Cause I've gone through all of that yeah. and it sucks. Yeah. But guess what? I still wake up, I come in, and I have my routine. The routine saves it all. See, because, and, and I, I, man, it's like, I'm like almost OCD. Mm. And my wife will attest to this. I've been with her for three and a half years. I eat the exact same breakfast every day. Whoa. What is the breakfast of champions? Every <laughs> day. You know, and I'm just, I'm saying that to, yeah. to reference that, like, I am like, every day, it's the same thing. What is it? So I eat six eggs, whole eggs. I eat one whole bagel with spread. I eat two pieces of bacon. I eat a coffee with a cookie. It's usually a Spanish bread cookie. Yeah. Okay. You guys yeah, we don't know nothing about that. Yeah, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> we're, and I eat one banana every single. Oh, and a cup of OJ. The whole breakfast t- tallies up to about 1,200 calories. I eat that every day. Mm. The same thing. My wife loves me because I eat the same thing. <laughs> well, make my life easy. I'm like, yeah. And, I, and when I don't get my meal, I feel weird mm. when I get like something else. Like sometimes she's like, babe, can I make you like a burrito? No, <laughs> make me my, my regular six eggs, bro. I go through eggs like crazy, by the way. I eat, Gosh. yeah. Like, you should don't get a chicken coop. Bro, I should get a chicken coop. The point yeah. is that yeah. I am a man of routine. So for example, my perfect vacation is about three to four days. Mm-hmm. Anything more than that, I'm itching. Like I just feel uncomfortable. I need to get back to it. Mm-hmm. Like I, and, and it is that consistency that I'm always going to win mm-hmm. because even when I am losing, I'm going to show up and you can feel like you're winning, but I'm still showing up every day. Mm. And now that I have all this to deal with that, I know I cannot fail. I'm hungrier than ever. I'm mm. working harder than ever, mm. you know, and consistent. And, and this is the thing. I've never even looked at retirement. Ask my wife. I, the idea of retirement doesn't even appeal me. Mm. I don't want to retire when I'm 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. Yeah. I'm going to be an old ass man yeah. still calling shots. Yeah. I mean, my energy is going to dwindle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still want to work. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm going to win because this is how I'm built. I'm not, there, there is no difference. There is no secret sauce to it. So over time, who, who has a higher chance of success? If I'm showing up every week for 90 to 100 hours, mm-hmm. you show up, I'm not saying you, but yeah, yeah. the average person <laughs> yeah. shows up for 30 to 40 hours, who has the higher chance of success here? Who has the higher chance to, uh, uh, to capitalize on an opportunity that comes their, their way? Mm. I'm there every day. Exactly. I have the chance, it, it's on my side. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's an unfair game before we even started. Mm. Hard work. That's all. There is no, there is no secret sauce. So mm-hmm. like to the guy, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to what you thought on this. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that consistency, that, that hunger, that mm-hmm. drive that you have, mm-hmm. do you feel like that's in you just from inception or you feel like people can develop that over time? I don't want to deter anybody and I could very well be wrong. I'm only 26. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
But since, bro, I started my first business when I was 17, right? And, and I'm talking fully incur- incorporated with the state. Like I was a CEO, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, before that, I had businesses too. In mm-hmm. school, I would sell candy. Like I would do anything to make money. I, I had a car wash business with my brother. I had a, a handyman business. I've always had it, right? Like I've always wanted to, to generate uh, income. Like it was just always in me. And I've also always just never given up. Like it's just... It's, it's always been there, like, I just keep going at it and keep pushing at it and keep pushing at it. I've talked to a lot of people that, that come to me for mentorship, and I can usually almost always tell, like, it's just not in them, mm-hmm. you know? And I, again, I don't tell them that. I just think about it in my head. So when you ask that question, if, I, if I'm going to speak truthfully, again, without disrespecting anybody, I really do think that some people are just built with it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure some people can develop it. But honestly, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I, the amount of stress that I go through, the amount of like, bro, like it, it, it's every day. The only person that understands it would be my wife because she has to hear my mouth every day, every day. Like, yo, this is going on. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I wouldn't wish this amount of stress or workload on anybody. Yeah. You know, uh, to have to deal with most people would go crazy mm-hmm. or yeah. be severely unhappy. I'm. A freaking what do you even call that a masochist <laughs> that it actually makes me happier yeah. being in this dirt like being in this heat yeah this actually makes me happy yeah so i kind of think you have to like oddly already be wired like that yeah, yeah. you know what i mean because i think the average person he would be severely unhappy or yeah. she yeah severely unhappy yeah and, that, and that's the part where I, you made a great point when we we're talking previously when it comes to it like and the end game is happiness Right. Correct. For every individual. Correct. There's some guys right now who being a first grade teacher making forty five thousand dollars living in Charlotte, North Carolina with their wife and their two kids. They're living an amazing, happy life. Yes. And 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 we are no greater than they they are just because we make more, just because we have more followers. That means that as long as you're happy at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But then the component that I always want to tell guys is. If you really want to be a guy like Jose or a guy like Chris, if you really want to be this guy who is going to be um, leading these large businesses to to have all this responsibility, there is a high value sacrifice Mm. that that you need to pay because everybody sees in social media the highlights. Everybody sees the, 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 the cars and the beautiful wives and the beautiful daughters and all the amazing things. But I'm like, yo, it has a price and it is a price that most people are not willing to pay. And so I like how you're sharing that because I think guys need to understand like if you want this certain life, it has a hefty price that some as you say, some of these guys don't even wish it on their children. A hundred percent. And and here's the thing. Um I think part of it has to do with the culture that YouTube built, especially like that that make money quick online culture, right? Mm. Uh, the false advertising, like, here's my quick car. You only have to work a day a week. Yeah. yeah. That created a false hope in a lot of people. Mm. I mean, yes, you do get to buy the Lamborghini. I I mean, again, not to, I, I bought a Lamborghini. You, you want to know how many miles I put on that thing? 500 miles. That's mm. all I put on that thing. You ain't driving at all. Because I didn't have time. Yeah. It was in my, <laughs> I, I kid you not, it was yeah. in my garage. Yeah. yeah. When I moved here, I sold all of it. Mm. It, it just money is not the motive. It's sold a G wagon too. Sold a G wagon. I sold all of it. I wanted to see it. <laughs> I sold, it. <laughs> I sold that one too. Sorry, bro. Um, that was my favorite. Car. Uh, I actually like that car. I've always liked. So I'm from Florida. I'm a truck guy. Yeah. And my deep down, I love trucks. Yeah. I just, I had a Raptor. I think that was my favorite car of all times. I had a, mm. like a decked out Raptor. Really? And I like just that, that feeling of like a, like a big heavy yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to miss the G. Um, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, that money is not the motive. It's just yeah. not, right? Like to me, the motive is the challenges that it comes with, mm-hmm. right? Like that, feel, that pressure, having to solve problems. That's what's entertaining. That's what I love. I love creating products for consumers because at the end of the day, all, all everything that I do is for my end consumer. That's all I care about, my end consumer, mm-hmm. right? So going back to that high value mindset, mm-hmm. right? The high value man is not here for the millions. Mm-hmm. He's high value because he's providing value for mm-hmm. people, 
right? And because it's almost selfless, yeah. right? Because you're, you're providing all this value, that's physical work to provide value, mm -hmm. you get rewarded. The money's secondary. The yeah. money comes in, right? But it's not, your, it, it, it's not your primary focus. And I told you what my goal is, right? It's, it's a, and I've said, it's no secret. It, it's, I say it in all my platforms, and I basically say it for accountability. Yeah. Right. I do want to make a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I want to generate that one day. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a fairy tale number that's borderline impossible. Yeah. And if you're in business, that's like the they call it unicorn companies for a reason. Yeah, uh -huh. they rarely ever come. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I, I want to set myself up for that challenge. Mm. Right. And we're already putting things into play right now, which are going to be it, it, these are the craziest projects we've ever done. Nothing to do with what we've ever done before in the past. Wow. It's scary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's also something we've never done. Yeah. It, it has its own set of challenges, right? Yeah. So it's not because I want a million dollars or 10 million or 100 million in my bank account. All of that could, I could care less about. It is the person and the man you have to become to break the 10 million, to break the 100 million, and therefore break that next goal. Yeah. It's like you have to evolve into th this different person this different mm. man that will like i told you it's not gonna get easier yeah. if i feel pressure now i can only imagine what i'm gonna feel when i'm 45 50. it's gonna get harder and i'm gonna love it i'm still gonna love it yeah. right and again not not for everyone because at the end of the day that's like i said it's almost like i'm a masochist right like that's how i'm comfortable mm. to ask my wife i hated the, the feeling of comfort that i felt about a year ago i hated it mm -hmm. I, I did not like it now i'm happy yeah you know? yeah it is weird yeah. but i'm happy so i'm gonna do what i what makes me happy if what makes you happy is that 45 50 do that yeah because if you do this bro you're gonna kill yourself why, yeah. why the hell would you do that mm. do whatever makes you happy yeah that's what matters oh uh, i asked you that question um uh, because i've been doing a lot of thinking especially this past right. year and I see a lot of things that are really common. Okay. You put the work in, yeah. you show up every single day, you remain consistent, you will get the outcome that you want, you will be happy. So if, if men can understand that concept, especially if we're talking about marriage, mm -hmm. to me, if you apply that same formula into marriage, you're, you should have a great life. Yeah. So to me, I feel like men have to develop that if they want a happy and healthy marriage and if you can do that in marriage because to me mm -hmm. in all mm -hmm. honesty that is the hardest test that god put on this earth is marriage and if you can really solve that problem you can put it into business if you want to if you want to make that money if you want to be successful and i just think that if 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 we can really beat into men that consistent work that you have to show up every single day when you get married if you that's at least at the bare minimum you're gonna have to do that then I feel like a lot of other lives can change if they apply Man, to other things. We, we could spend an hour just talking about marriage. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a young kid. I, I've been dating my, my wife now three and a half years in total, married one and a half. Mm -hmm. So you could argue I'm still in my honeymoon phase, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in love with this woman, in love. And, and I, I think I mentioned this in the previous podcast, the single most important. So I said the, the best decision that in the business that I did was, you know, that office decision for me was the best. It kind of like amped up. But the single most important decision in my life was choosing to marry my wife. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that woman thick and thin with me. That's the woman that I keep saying, referencing this whole video that listens to all my problems. When I'm stressed out, that I'm feeling beat up from business, from all the work. Guess who, guess who listens and patches me back up? My wife. Mm -hmm. My wife helps me keep going further mm -hmm. and stronger. And she's wise too. Um, man, and especially, look, I don't recommend marriage for everybody, right? Like if, if you don't, I don't want you to get married. A lot of men get married out of comfort, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been dating this girl for five years. I guess the next step is marriage, yeah. Yeah. right? A lot of men get married through, through peer pressure. A lot of, because, oh, I'm 25, I'm 27, my clock is sticking out, I have... So a lot of men get married for the wrong reasons. That's the, that is the, the, one, the first main problem, right? So that's why I'm saying marriage is not for everybody. If you don't want to get married, definitely don't get married because somebody's forcing you because you're going to be miserable. It's the same thing as business. I wouldn't wish, right? But to me, it's the best decision of my life. Mm -hmm. I love the decision that I made of having that partner, right? Like you said, it's one of the toughest tests that God put on this earth because just like business, you show up every day and the problem with marriages is that people stop showing up mm -hmm. right what happens when, when you're trying to like get this girl bro you're you're doing everything right you're going to the gym you're making sure you smell good your grooming's on point you're doing everything to make sure this girl and then you're doing all the 
the sim simpery, right? Yeah, you're getting yeah, your yeah, flowers, yeah, you're yeah, getting yeah, your chocolates, yeah, you're doing yeah, all this yeah, stuff yeah. by stuff because you know women are emotional creatures. And I've heard the whole red pill talk, you know. Mm. Um, you know, and, and, and the thing is that there's truth in that whole red pill mentality. Mm -hmm. Women are, uh, uh, what do you call it, opportunistic? Uh, hypergamous. Hypergamous, right? Yeah, yeah, but also yeah. opportunistic. Yeah, 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 they'll they'll well, yeah. go to the next one yeah. if it's available. Yeah, yeah. But dudes are the same way. Yeah. Right? Like, what happens in most marriages that fail, right? Or, like, especially when the dude gets successful, look at Jeff Bezos, for yeah. example, right? Or mm -hmm. most successful athletes, they usually get married to somebody in their level. Let's mm -hmm. say there are three, so they get married to somebody relatively in their level. Mm -hmm. Then they level up, right? Mm -hmm. Because they start getting money. And, and status so now they can have access to any woman they want mm -hmm. what ends up happening most of these athletes get caught in their dms mm -hmm. right or in the club yeah right because they are also opportunistic yeah. the point is that when it comes to a marriage you have to continue to work on with each other so for example my wife knows what i want there's two things that i want yeah i'm not going to mention them <laughs> <in the podcast. laughs> but one of them yeah i'm a visual man right yeah. like yo my wife is hot. I married her. One of the reasons I married her, she's beautiful to look at. Yeah. I like looking at my wife in certain clothing. Yes. So I like for her to still dress in that same clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want her to start looking bummy just, right? And she understands that. She still does that for me. Yeah. And vice versa. I know she's an emotional creature, right? That's how women are. Yeah. We understand that. So what happens with most men? And this is why I don't, I just hate the whole it's your fault culture and this happens in everything with racism with it happens with money and politics and it happens in even marriage right mm -hmm. oh it's the woman's fault yeah. that she cheated on me look what happens in, in most average relationships for example i'm a workaholic mm -hmm. my tendency would be to work here all the time and what happens i neglect my wife which i fully well known she's emotional right mm -hmm. women are women need that emotional attention yeah. let's assume that i neglect her for over 10 years yeah right What's going to happen, she, she's in a male-driven environment, and some dude starts giving her that emotion that I neglected. Look, if she acts upon that, 100% on her. She's at fault. She should have never done that. But I enabled that. Mm -hmm. I allowed that to happen because mm -hmm. I stopped showing up to my marriage. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, right? There's two things that a man needs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> one yeah. of them is visual. Yeah, we all know yeah, what the yeah, other yeah, one yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 Especially in our... Bro, right yeah, now we're yeah. freaking bold. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So what happened in most marriages after a year, two years, three years? Oh, honey, I'm tired. Honey, I have a headache. Honey, this. Honey, that. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading a statistic that the average married couple uh, apparently has sex about 50 to 60 times a year. <laughs> no wonder right so what happens when the woman neglects the guy for a few years and then here comes that hot 25 year old again yeah. that's giving you what you want as a man yeah teach Look, a man fashion you, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to teach you something <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm swear, I swear, bro you're gonna be in trouble dude um this dude bro uh so back to what i was saying um, oh, that's my train of thought, man. <laughs> I, had that, I had that joke for like a week. I had it, I had it in my bag for a week. You what happens when a 25-year-old uh, intern yeah. comes. So yeah. if I act on it, 100% my fault. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But who enabled yeah. me to do that? Yeah. You neglected me for that long. Yeah. Just like business. You made a great analogy. You show up every single day. That's how you... Bro, I love coming home. Yeah. I love seeing my wife. And I work around a lot of women yeah and if you see any of my com campaigns and you'll see the models that we work with yeah a lot of them yeah i don't care yeah. i still think my wife is the prettiest and sexiest woman i've ever seen yeah right because we both show up all the time yeah right now let's say my wife was neglecting me all the time yeah not giving me what a male needs <laughs> <laughs> what's gonna happen yeah Women don't understand this part, but we do really have two different heads. Let, and let's Look, talk. And, and the other you know, <laughs> one of them doesn't have morals. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and let's yeah, talk yeah. about that real quick. So the, we were having a conversation, I'm, and I'm glad that you're here to talk about that, mm -hmm. about the idea of ambition. Mm. Okay. So what would you define as ambition? Man, I've never looked up the Webster. Your pro, definition. Your, no, your my definition, your, my definition yeah. is just being hungry. Okay, right? hungry. You, you you want something more. Cool. Yeah. And it, it, I just also want to clarify: it doesn't necessarily need to be monetarily, right? Yeah. So if you're a teacher, you want to be the best teacher you can of be. Of course. Uh, 
if you're a research scientist, you want to be the best scientist. Yeah, of you course. Can, right? I don't care what it is. You're just you're hungry for more. I love it. Yeah. So right. ambitious person is hungry for more. So what I find in ambitious men is that they're hungry in every single aspect of their life. So financially, they have a million. They want 10. They have 10. They want 100. Business-wise, they have one business. They want to run two. They have two. They want to run four. Every aspect of their life, they have a nice house. They want a better house. They're, they always have this un, un, deny, uh, unending desire for more. Okay. And then so what also happens is that that ambition is also sexually where that they experience, and, and a lot of women don't get this part about that. The same way a guy can have a billion dollars and be happy with a billion, he still wants more. There is sometimes a desire in a man that he wants more. So yeah. you personally in your life, do you feel that? Mm -hmm. And if, or if not, how do you navigate that as a man? You're 100% right. So the way I put it, I don't, I don't categorize it as ambition. I categorize it more as, and I might be wrong here, right? Uh, it, it is just our nature, right? Um, just look, look at the animal kingdom. A male lion can impregnate 30 lionesses if he wants. Mm -hmm. The lioness can only take one male counterpart. Yeah. Right? The male's lion. So uh, I, I remember I was watching this video and it was talking about what is the meaning of life re, uh, without God, right? It was just mm -hmm. a scientific video. And at its bare, taking all the bells and whistles out, the one meaning of life mm -hmm. is the transferring of DNA. Mm -hmm. That is more, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, your strand to the next generation, to the next, because you, you want the survival of your species. That's all, mm -hmm. right? That is, it, when you take all the bells and whistles off, that is the meaning of life, the, the reproduction of your DNA strand. So your species survives. The men are the ones that drive the survival of our species. We are wired to continue to pump our species. Again, removing yeah. modern knowledge, yeah. right? That obviously overpopulation and impregnating 100 women is not smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just as an animal, animalistically looking at it, that is how we're wired. Mm -hmm. Look at in the animal kingdom. They are wired to continue to pump out so their species does not die. Mm -hmm. And if they don't pump out at the right rate, your species goes extinct, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think that as human, uh, as men, we're fighting against that natural wiring that we have. Mm. Biologically, that's how we're wired. And if we want to look at it even religiously, right? If you want to look at it in, 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 in the beginning, I, I think it's in the book of Genesis that it says, go and populate the earth. Mm -hmm. Who has to do all that? Yeah. The men. Mm -hmm. we, we're the ones that are pumping out. Women can only take one a year, Yeah. right? So I think that it is almost built in our DNA mm -hmm. to just continue to, right? So now understanding that, because I understand, and if we want to look at it more in a modern sense, we just know we're all dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, that is the truth of it. We yeah. are, bro, once the other head is, it, it's almost like all morals go out the door. Yeah. I understand that about myself. That is a male weakness, mm -hmm. right? So I do everything I do, or I do everything I can to get away from that, mm. right? So. And I've told you stories about this before pre-podcast, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of instances where I just move out of that area. So for example, when I do work, I don't work. So when I work with these models, it's a very like personal and there's a lot of layers before I even get there. Like there's people that deal with the models. So I don't work closely hand in hand with them, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I would be setting myself up for failure because mm -hmm. I, at the end of the day, am an animal mm. as you guys are, as all men are. Mm -hmm. But most men are not that protective, right? Mm. Most men think, okay, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. Yeah. You're going to cheat. Mm. I'm telling you right now that if you put a really hot woman in, in my proximity and I work with her every day, she comes into my office, you know, it's going to be work Yeah. late nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even know how much I give myself before I, I, screw, <laughs> the, I screw the pooch. Yeah. And it's not that I don't love my wife mm. and, and, and women, <laughs> every time I have this conversation with my wife, at first she didn't get it. Yeah. Right. But I, and I, I still think women don't get it. But yeah. it really is like we have two different heads. Yeah. And post not clarity is a real thing. Is you're real gonna thing. realize your f up afterwards. Yeah. You know? Right. But before, when you're fueled up on that testosterone, you are a legit bull. Yeah. It, it, you see red. That's mm -hmm. all you see. Right. Yeah. So as a man that's married, 
Yo, I make it clear. I'm a married man. First of all, I don't, I don't flirt with them. I don't, nothing personal. It's business. Yeah. It's, it's business. That's all it is. Nothing, yeah. None of this is personal. Mm. Right. And I keep it as separate as possible. Again, a lot of people deal with them. I only come in when I really need to come in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I protect my marriage. Mm. You know, because I, again, I understand who I am as a male mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do. It's, it's the woman's fault. No. Yeah. You got to understand you, mm. you know? No, that big. I mean, that that self awareness that you have, you know, it it, it all comes full circle because it requires work to 100%. remain faithful in a, a relationship yes. in a marriage yes. 30, 40, 50 years 100%. requires work from both parties. And that's something where I feel like a lot of people don't even realize and women don't even realize that as well. They don't yeah. understand that they have to put just as much amount of work in as well to make sure that the chances of being unfaithful in a marriage it decreases dramatically. Oh, yeah, and we have this conversation with my wife all the time. She knows exactly what I want and need mm -hmm. as a man. She, she, ha she, that's very clear to her, and she doesn't drop the ball either, right? Because, and that's why I'm saying, when you marry the, the the person that you find, she needs to be a person that supports you, right? Backs you up, licks your wounds when you're down as a man, right? But also that she also puts in the work. Mm -hmm. You know, she needs to understand that dynamic in a marriage, and my wife does that. That's why, like, I'm telling you, like. We're two years in almost, and I, bro, I, I love going home to my wife. Yeah. I'm in love with my wife just as I was the first day that I saw her. Yeah. You know, and again, people will argue it's the honeymoon phase. Same thing like I told you with this office, ask me 10 years from now, ask me 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can almost guarantee you, beyond a reasonable doubt, yeah. I'm still going to love my wife. So there's, it, so you know? one of the things me, me and my friend, we were having a conversation about, because, you know, there's always this debate, and I find this debate most prompt, most loud amongst modern marriage, amongst mm -hmm. two different guys. Mm -hmm. Guys who are divorced and guys who are y too young to understand marriage. And so there's a third voice who doesn't speak enough about it are those that are in actual happy, healthy marriages. And I'm the kind of person where I'm like, I'm not just gonna hear the negative stories all day long. And the component about that that I want to bring up is that I don't think guys understand that when you're a guy, you want to be a real high value. And uh, it's even funny that like, even Kevin Samuels brings up some of these statistics about mm -hmm. how many head level CEOs mm -hmm. are married, how many multi the billionaires are married, mm -hmm. because there is a level of focus. There's a level of stability that a good woman provides to a man's life that being a bachelor and juggling seven, 10, 50, whatever you're juggling, it will only provide more distractions than benefits in the long term. Mm. You want to run this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you want to run this podcast, but bro, <laughs> keep preaching. Like you, you're you're on point with that. Yeah. Like that is exact. Here's the thing. Like, and, and, and that's what I was telling you. Like, when I'm down, guess who's licking my wounds? Guess who's giving me advice? My wife. And men discredit that a lot. When I'm up, guess who's celebrating with me? Guess who's hyping me up? Like, oh, you're the man. Mm -hmm my wife, right? Men discredit that a lot. Having that partner, that other half, it's powerful. It helps you keep going. Look, and I've done it by myself too, mm -hmm. but you're stronger as a unit. And uh, like you're saying, the whole big, like all right, taking the Jeff Be Bezos situation, you don't think, uh, I think her name was Mackenzie, I might be wrong. She helped him out when, when they were starting out amazon that she was there the same way giving him advice helping with the business packing orders when they were just starting you know she must have been there so i was completely fine with the 40 billion she took i think she deserved it because she was there from the start i know the role that that woman probably played in in, in jeff Be well i don't know but yeah. I'm, I'm i'm assuming yeah. that she played a very crucial role if she was a supportive wife right mm -hmm. that whole time which helped him in the long haul, helped him keep going further, yeah. licking those wounds, celebrating the successes, giving him advice. Because I see it firsthand with my wife, mm -hmm. right? She does it all the time. So you're right. And then when it comes to the dating side, because I've, I've worked the business while I was dating too. Mm -hmm. Well, I just didn't have time. Mm -hmm. And dating takes so much energy out of you, right? And honestly, marriage takes energy out of, energy out of you, but it's a little bit different because you guys are in, in agreement, right? So, the woman that I met, she's ambitious too. Mm -hmm. She's hungry too. Mm -hmm. She's not just twiddling her thumbs like, honey, give me attention all the time. Mm -hmm. she, so I help her too. I, I support her goals too, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I found her, too, I was in love with her. She was beautiful and smart, mm -hmm. you know? Finding that right wife, 
it, it, it is crucial. That's why I'm saying, like, now, I don't think everybody should just rush into marriage. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. But you got to find that right woman. Yeah. Um, honestly, if, if, if I was still single now, it's just it's just hard. Yeah. It, it, it's hard. I remember most of the time, most of the relationships that I had, it was just like I would ignore them most of the time. Why? Because I was here. Mm-hmm. I really would. Zero attention whatsoever, mm. <laughs> which would cause a bunch of fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, whoa, yo, yeah. I love this more. Yeah, and <laughs> literally. So, <laughs> you know. And you said earlier we were talking about evolving. And it kind of mm-hmm. ties all of them together because I've mm-hmm. seen the evolution in your content. And I yeah. love the new form of content where yeah. you get the girls and the guys and mm-hmm. you kind of play in on the I, the themes in like a more holistic way. So you just so many girls are coming in and out of the office and yeah. you're hearing them sharing and hearing them like tell their stories. What are some things that you're learning about women today from all your experiences with this new form of content that you've been doing and hearing these girls share their stories on your videos? Men aren't men, bro. Yeah. Men aren't men. Mm. Just our, our generation. Yo, and, and again, I don't want to insult anybody, but that is like the recurring theme. And, and and look, women carry their own burden. They have their own things to deal with, which I'm not going to talk about. I'm not no woman expert. I can yeah. tell you what I think they should fix, but, yeah. but I can tell you from the male side, they're not bringing anything to the table. Mm. Right. Men are complainers nowadays. Mm. Kind of like that pointing fingers that I was telling you. It's complaining around all. Oh, it's because I'm brown. It's because I'm black. It's because I'm poor. It's it's because of the women. It's because of them. It's all of this finger pointing instead of looking at yourself. Mm. Right. And I think you being an immigrant, I'm being an immigrant. We come from a different culture. Right. America is very entitled. America is an amazing place. I love this country. I love it. Gave me every opportunity in the world. But the generation that was born in this was born very entitled, I think, right? Whereas when you come from nothing, Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. Come from Honduras, super poor country, right? You're hungry for it. It's it's like you you don't you know what the bottom tastes like, so you don't want to go back there, you know. And what ends up happening is that all these guys just end up pointing their fingers at everybody. Versus just ending up looking at themselves and leveling, leveling themselves up. You and I as immigrants, we looked at ourselves. Okay, what can I do to get up there? This is one of the reasons why we moved here, right? I told you this. When I'm in my office and I look out and I see the skyline, it's, it's like a power dynamic thing. I feel so small. Mm. Like, yo, there's power out there. Mm. What do I have to do to get up there? Mm. Right? What do I have to do to keep scaling? Mm. I'm nobody out here. Yeah. Right? I lived my life like that the whole time. I've always looked here, right? I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm a natural born introvert. My social skills were trash, right? Even talking to regular people, I, I, had, I had a problem with, let alone girls. What did I do? I looked here. I didn't blame the girls. Oh my God, they're annoying. They're, they're all, the, all the girls. Are the, no, 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 right here, right? I was scrawny. I was a scrawny ass dude, tall and scrawny and a big ass head. I looked <laughs> stupid, bro. Yeah, yeah. What did I do? I'm gonna go hit the gym. I looked in here, right? Business too. I was broke. I was broke. I was. A, I came from a from an immigrant low class family. What did I do? Look in here. Mm-hmm. Right. Same thing with my stock. Everything. It's always here. Always leveling yourself up, and then you develop this perfect package of a man that you bring all the value. Mm. Bro, you can. You have access to anybody. Yeah. And 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 I've always said this. There is no. I don't think there's ugly men. Mm. Most men can fix themselves up. Style. Charisma. Uh, clothing, the whole nine, at least, even if you're the ugliest dude, you could probably level up to a five, five, six. Yeah. Add money to that, you're a seven, eight now. Yeah. Everybody can do it. Why don't they do it? They don't want the work. Mm. They don't want the work, right? Because personal development takes the same amount of work as marriage does, the mm. same amount of work as business does. Yeah. And again, since I'm that masochist, mm-hmm. you know, there was a point in time when I had a little more time, I was going to the gym twice a day, every day. I'm no athlete. I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Athletes do that. Yeah. Why? I was obsessed with just getting better, faster, stronger. Mm-hmm. It becomes obsessive. Yeah. Now I'm down to one because I'm out of time. Yeah, but yeah, 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 if yeah. I could, I'd be going two times a day, three yeah. times a day. It becomes obsessive. Yeah. Right? That hard work. It, it, I, I, this is a great way to relate it to. Right? So lately, I think the last two weeks I haven't gone to the gym. When I don't go to the gym, I feel... I just feel weird mm-hmm. and it's just been lack of time like i just i literally wake up and just come to the office now just because i need more time right so what i was telling my wife is i i feel like like 
since I don't, so I like going to sleep in pain, sore. I like when I wake up and I'm just like all sore and beat mm. up. I like that. Mm. And it's like, it's that same masochism that I like when I'm stressed out. It is, it is the weirdest thing. Yeah. But most people, when they're sore, they hate it because they mm. can't walk. You feel uncomfortable. Yet I like that discomfort. And it might be because I know that it's, it's molding me. It's changing me. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with the discomfort of hard, working hard, of the stress. I know it's changing me. It is molding me into becoming somebody different. Mm. I have completely derailed from the point of <laughs> <laughs> the problem at the end of the day is I think men are still boys mm. and not trying to become men. Mm. Right. And so women end up with subpar men that are a bunch of whiny babies. <laughs> and <laughs> my question to you is. When you were leveling up, when mm -hmm. you were improving, getting mm -hmm. better, working mm -hmm. hard, being consistent, yeah. how long did that take? When you was like, you know what? I'm at this form where I was like, I, I am a man. Yeah. Not a finished product, but oh, I, no. I, I bring, you know what I mean? I bring, I bring some, value. Yeah, I, I bring, bring value. some value. How long was that process? Like you said, it's never a finished product, yes. right? Like, yes. and, and, and the beautiful thing with YouTube, I, I don't lie. You can never say... Oh, he was born into money. Oh, he's always been good at talking to people and he's always had that career. You can never say that because you can go back to the first video and you'll see that scrawny dude with the big head that stutters and looks all awkward. You'll see that dude. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see that progression over time, right? So you can't lie. I would say that I think by the time I was already 19, 20, I was like, I had, I had double tripled all of my classmates like mm. i was i was a full blown blown man like i could take care of myself and anybody else if i needed to obviously i was i was too young for that yeah, yeah. right but by 1920 i was a and i started when i was like 15 16 probably yeah. that i started like that i noticed like yo i'm kind of i'm kind of lame yeah that's what I, I said to myself like i'm kind of slow like i don't have those conversational skills that the popular kids have what do i do all right we're gonna work on this yeah you know so what I've realized is that some that uncomfortable feeling, mm -hmm. some people have that about not being successful. Mm. Some people have that feeling about being so uncomfortable. The same way if you don't wipe your butt, you can't sit down without wanting to get up and run to the bathroom. Some people feel that about their lives right now. Mm -hmm. That's why they make a change. They're, they're so uncomfortable with the way their life is today. It irks them they can't sleep at night you could not go to sleep because you could not talk to girls so you forced yourself to go to the mall so what i've noticed is that when it comes to a lot of people mm -hmm. they are not that uncomfortable so when they go to the bathroom they don't wipe their butts their butt is itchy and they just cool with it being itchy the whole Yo, day and, and and i'm i'm okay with that right like it's so and i've told you, you not everybody has to be that way you don't have to be that way, but you cannot then complain. Yeah. Why don't I have money? It's not fair that the greedy boss has all the money. You cannot complain. It's the women because they're opportunistic or hypergamous, like you said, right? Yeah. Hypergamous? Yes. It's the women. You cannot say that if you're not the one putting in the work. Yeah. You know? And that's my only beef with, because again, like the whole red pill situation, all that type of stuff, they, there's truth to their statements. Mm -hmm. That is true. But so are men. Mm -hmm. That's how we are. We're greedy. We're humans. That, 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 that is it. Right. But if you don't want to level up, if you don't want to put in the work in business and personal development and, and talking to girls and, and learning how to build strong relationships, if you don't want to put in the work in that, don't complain about that. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Right. That's all it is. But if you do, there is no secret sauce. Mm -hmm. There is nobody to blame. Yeah. None of that. It's you. Exactly. That's it. mm -hmm. And that and that's the part where for me is like, like I said, tying it to the poop examples is a joke, obviously. <laughs> but but <Not> <laughs> no, that's that yeah. stuck in my head. I'm yeah, 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 that. yeah. <laughs> so 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 to me, it is like like I said, it's one yeah. thing. To me, it's it's a problem. Yeah. What bothers you is a problem. So it's one thing where it's like your life, you're happy Correct. making 45 Correct. and you're happy playing video games in your mom's basement and you're happy Fine. being an incel. That's one thing. Yeah. But similar to the poop example I gave, when it's a problem that you are so uncomfortable in, mm. that you're so miserable about, but you stay in it. Yep. And that's the part where I'm like, when is enough going to be enough? Well, it... it, it 
this is the thing that all these all these podcasts and I, I was telling you this before all these podcasts all this self-help all of this stuff we could summarize all of it to one thing it's just hard work yeah that's there, there is no shortcut there is no shortcut to looking good. There is no shortcut to a good body, to being athletic, to, to getting a D1 scholarship. There is no shortcut to any of it. It is hard work. The problem is that nobody wants to put in the work. That's the thing. Because that's how we are as humans, right? We want it easy. We want it now. We want that instant gratification, right? So it's much easier to blame somebody than to think, man, I gotta put in hours of work. It is my fault. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what differentiates those select few men that end up being successful, like you guys, like me, like any other business guy, right? Because I don't look anywhere else. I don't blame my wife, I don't blame women, I don't blame my parents, I don't blame my skin tone color. I don't blame, I asked my wife, this is the one thing where we would always discuss, right, the skin tone color thing. I have never blamed my skin tone. Have I experienced racism? Yeah, of course. Every, every color. I'm sure you guys have experienced racism. Never have I blamed my skin tone color. I am more successful than 99% of men, including white males. Did I have to work a little harder? Maybe. That, bit, that made me tougher. Right? Same thing with you guys. It is the blaming that's the problem. Right? Mm -hmm. Always look here. It's always here. Almost always it's going to be here. Mm -hmm. When you fix this up, Almost all your problems will will, will, will be aligned, mm. you know. Um, and like I said, I, women have their problems too, mm -hmm. right? They they have to deal with their own issues. Yeah. But as a man, it's right here. That's it. And as a man, it takes a man to humble yourself mm. and own up to that. Yeah. Be like, yo, you know what? My social skills are trash. Maybe that's why women play me. Yo, you know what? My relationship skills are trash. Maybe that's why she keeps going off with Chad or <laughs> X Y Z. <laughs> Right, it's it's me. Yeah, I f that up. Yeah, yeah, and, and we love you because you are a prime example of that. Yeah. You know, you are a guy that, like you said, is not a finished product, but you started from the bottom and look where you're at now. Yeah. So the men today, like what we talked about earlier, especially in this year, this day, mm -hmm. day and age, we have so much information out there. Like like we've been saying, there's no excuse. Yeah. So not only that you don't have no excuse, you have channels. You Correct. have two channels here are helping you yep. and guiding you and giving you these level up information and all these videos and all these courses, one on one sessions, all these things. We cannot want it more than you do. No, no. And, and bro, I, I've been watching. I've been watching your guys' content left and right. You, you guys are on point, right? <laughs> I saw your T-shirts the other day, the leveling up and I put fire because I thought that was that's dope. You're loading. You're leveling. We got you a shirt coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to hook you guys up yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but that's dope, right? That, that concept that you're always leveling up. It doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. You're Look, life is a big game and people can, you can complain and life's not fair, yada, yada. Why is it fair that he gets all the girls? Learn how to play the game. Mm. Learn how to play the game. Mm. We know what women want. Women want a 10. They want a six-figure earner. They want to, you know, or we can't control height. <laughs> <laughs> they do want that six foot tall guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They want a lean guy. They don't want a chubby dude, yeah. at least lean, yeah. right? Somebody with status, somebody that's a little dominant. We know the, you intuitively know the traits women want. Mm -hmm. Why not work on them? Yeah. Right? And same thing with women. Women know intuitively what men want. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change five not even whatever, however long human history has been and however long men have wanted the same thing, men have not changed. Men have always been dogs. Mm -hmm. Kings used to have a million concubines, mm -hmm. right? The prettiest women of the land would come to him, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't change. Yeah. And if you want a king, you better be top percent. Yeah. In the same format that you want a top percent male. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's simple. Learn mm -hmm. how to play the game. Like yeah. it's... You're not going to change the game. Mm. You won't be that one person that unlocks a new level, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's the work. Yeah. It's the work. Nah, man. It's always um like I said, I I love I love you, man, because you inspire me, you motivate me, and I and I I hope more men see that. I hope more men obviously um can find other guys in their lives that can do that for them. I appreciate that, bro. Because I think for me it's it's like I, like you said I think sometimes, unfortunately, with so many guys, they're stuck with peers who are not get going after it. They're stuck with peers who are not improving. So therefore, they 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 don't see more because they don't 
No more. They don't know more about more. But what's beautiful about the internet is that they have channels like yours, yeah. where you can actually get a digital mentor. And one of my favorite comments is people always say like, "Jose is like my big brother that I never had." And so I just yeah. I want guys to realize that even if you don't have those tools and resources, Jose's channel, obviously our channel, but please Appreciate take that. advantage Appreciate of that, that because it's you're really transforming lives, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and and what you said was key, like. I don't know if you guys remember in the, in the beginning of the podcast, I told you at the end of the day, all I care about is the end consumer. Yeah. Right. And that's both the end consumer that watches my content and the end consumer that buys my products. Mm -hmm. um, with every single piece of content I put out. And that's why it's so relatable. Yeah. Like, I don't lie, bro. Like I told you, I don't lie. You can go through my content. You'll see that. You could, you should not listen to me if you would not see the fruits of the labor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. But it's there it's yeah. there you could see that growth the, the whole thing i have videos when i moved into my first office i record all that because mm. it's like a time cap so you can go back and you can see 20 year old jose nervous about signing his first lease mm -hmm. right you'll see all of that yeah. right um but at the end of the day every piece of content that i put out it's to help them because i came through the same thing i'm telling you nobody taught me that look my dad amazing he taught me hard work. Yeah. Immigrant. This this man started from nothing, right? So did my mom. But when it came to business and especially leveling oneself up, they didn't. That's not stuff that you. I'm sure your parents didn't show you that type of stuff either. Mm. It really was intuitive. To me, it was, and that's what. Remember how you asked me? Are, are some people born with it? Mm. Yo, I low key think like you have to have that that trait. And what did I do? All right, let me start searching. How can I? be a better talker how can i put on more weight like you start searching and then you start doing your thing and putting in the work yeah mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um so at the end of the day what i try to do is facilitate that like right here's the content that helped me mm -hmm. become who i am hopefully it can help you and when i see those comments and i'm sure you guys get this the same thing as you guys then you probably get the comment that says oh you guys are like my brothers you guys are like my friends mm -hmm. right it like fuels you like yo yeah you changed one life yeah. That's all it needs to be. One person. You have no... Let's say you only get 10,000 views a video. Or even 1,000. Because some people downplay 1,000 views. Yeah. You have no idea that one out of those 1,000 could be the next superstar. Yeah. The next athlete. Yeah. Right? The next CEO. Mm -hmm. The next head surgeon. You yeah. have no idea who you're touching. Every time you get one of those comments. I love That's it. That's what adds fuel to a fire. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. What's next for you, man? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even want to say it. Uh, we'll save it. We'll save it off the camera. Yeah, we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it off the camera. It's 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 big. Yeah. I have never gotten outside investing ever. Mm. I'll, I'll leave it at this. All my companies are self invested from the inside. Yeah. Right. So, my brother and I mm -hmm. put in all the. So anytime there's a new project, self funded. Yeah. And in our at our level at the products that we're moving. At the scale, at the rate that we're scaling, most companies at this rate would have already had uh, rounds of, uh, of funding mm -hmm. done. Um, we have two plans to, to, to roll out that have nothing to do with style, mm -hmm. nothing to do with product. I'll tell you this. I've always wanted to be in tech. Mm. Always. I'll, I'll leave it there. Mm, dun, dun, dun. Um, I don't know what to think. <laughs> and and uh, I think this will be my step into the to where I want to go. That's awesome. Uh, I don't know if it'll if, if it'll be the billion dollar company, but yeah. it'll put me in the right direction, right? Get my it. feet wet. Um, and it's expensive, and it's probably going to be the first company where I'm going to go for outside funding because it's like it's it's intensive. Sheesh. It's sheesh. intensive, but it's. I'm curious, man. You about to it's big. Yeah, I'm uh, about to pop up right here. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it ain't no iron. Right? But it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same thing. Change lives. Yeah. yeah. Facilitate. That's a. <laughs> that's how business is, bro. Like, I love it. you're yeah. helping men. You're yeah. changing lives. Except this one would be everybody, not yeah. just men. Yeah. Yeah. Dope, dope, um, dope. But yeah, that that's next. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Cool. That no problem. Nice. So, uh, where can they find you at, Jose? You already know. Teach yeah. events, fashion, Instagram. I'm I'm pretty active on there all the time, and obviously YouTube. I'm posting every single day. Yes, yes, it's yes, guys. So make sure you go to Jose's Instagram page. Go ahead, send him a DM. Let him know what about the podcast stood out to you. If you are not subscribed to Teaching Men's Fashion YouTube channel, go to YouTube right now. Hit the subscribe button. You should be on YouTube right now. Uh, <laughs> show Jose some love. Thank you guys so much. I learned a lot. My name is Hafiz. Chris will start a show, baby. And we are joined by... Hey, my name is Jose. Thank you, guys. We're the roommates and... <laughs> Adios. <laughs>